Med students either love Anki and crush their med school exams, or they hate it and drown in flashcards. I hated Anki to start and almost quit, but eventually scored in the 99.9th percentile on step one and matched at Harvard. In this video, I'll break down what makes Anki the secret weapon for acing med school exams and the number one rule to use it to remember anything forever. Let's dive in. So I wanna start by talking about why Anki is critical for any medical student. Medical knowledge has grown at an exponential rate. Estimates show that medical knowledge is doubling at an incredibly rapid pace. In 1950, they estimated that medical knowledge doubled every 50 years. In 1980, it doubled every seven years. In 2010, it doubled every three and a half years. And in 2020, they estimate that medical knowledge will double every 73 years days. Now think about that. That means that in roughly two and a half months, the amount of knowledge that's known is going to be twice as much as it was two and a half months before. This explosion, in fact, has hit medical students particularly hard. Over the course of a few years, UWorld, the QBank, for step one, went from 2,519 questions to 3,796, which means that in only a few years, it increased by more than 50%. In a similar period of time, the step two UWorld QBank went from roughly 2,300 questions to 4,077, which is about 70% increase in only a few years. You can see this in other popular resources as well, including First Aid for the US Assembly Step 1, where from 2011 to 2023, there were more than 200 pages added, which is an increase of more than 36% in growth in the number of things that you have to know to do well on these exams. So as medical knowledge is expanding, what we need is an effective mechanism to retain these vast amounts of information. So how does Anki help in all of this exploding medical knowledge? It all starts with the idea of the forgetting curve. So the forgetting curve is empiric observations of how long it takes someone to forget something after they've learned it. So typically you might forget something in say a day or maybe two. What's interesting is, is that if you review that information within the period of time in which you would otherwise forget it, you can actually remember everything that you just learned again and the rate at which you'll forget it will decrease. And so this is the basis of spaced repetition that the more times that you review things, the slower it is that you're going to forget it. The punchline is, is that because you are increasing the rate at which you're going to remember it every single time you review it, you can remember anything as long as you continue to do your flashcards. I'll give you an example. So my first year at Stanford Medical School was 2009, and that's when I started to use Anki. I've done my cards every day since then, and I've accumulated about 20,000 flashcards over that period of time. I only have to review roughly 100 cards out of those 200,000 cards every single day because the amount of time that I'll remember the cards has increased so much that I only have to do a tiny fraction of those cards, which takes me about 30 minutes a day. Not only does Anki help with the amount of knowledge that you need to understand, it also helps with the variety of knowledge necessary in medical education, particularly for clinical practice, as well as for board exams. Anki has the ability to create different kinds of cards for different kinds of medical knowledge needs. So for example, you can use picture cards to help you with histology sections. You can also have picture cards to help you with EKG interpretations. You can use cards that will help you with interpreting x-rays or there'll be cards that can show you CT findings. You can even have cards for things like echocardiograms with animated images, as well as cards for sounds. So I made, for example, cards on heart sounds and heart murmurs where I would listen to the murmur and I could remember what a VSD sounded like or I could remember what an aortic stenosis type murmur could sound like. There's also a variety of other kinds of cards including closed deletion and image occlusion cards where you can hide a part of the image and so you can learn how to identify those things. So Anki probably sounds incredible, but just like anything, you have to use it appropriately. And so in this section, I'm gonna talk about the number one rule, how to use Anki effectively. This rule is that consistency is key. You have to do your cards every single day. I'm gonna talk about an equation that helps you understand what the maximum retained knowledge that you might have would be. And so the equation goes, maximum retained knowledge equals the amount learned divided by the percent forgotten per day. So what that means is, is that if I learn 10 things per day and I forget roughly 10% of the information that I've learned every day, then the amount that I will know maximally if I continue on this will be 10 on the top divided by 
0.1 or 10% on the bottom, which means the maximum retained knowledge is going to be 100, right? 100 things that I would know. What this means is, is that you can increase the maximum amount that you learn by one of two ways. You can either increase the amount that you're learning every day, or you can decrease the percent that you forget. As you might imagine, it's easier to decrease the percent that you forget every single day than it is to increase the amount that you learn. So I can go, say, from forgetting 30% of the knowledge that I have learned every day to maybe 3% or from 3% to 1%. Easier than I can go from say learning 10 things a day to learning 300 things a day, which would be a similar amount in terms of magnitude. And so what this means ultimately is that the amount of knowledge that you're going to accrue depends on using Anki to never forget things and to make sure that you use it every single day. Want more ways to use Anki to remember anything and do better on your exams in less time? Click the like and subscribe button. With Anki, you can customize it to memorize any kind of medical knowledge you need. It's amazing to never forget what you've learned, but you have to use Anki carefully. If you don't know the right methods, using Anki can backfire and cause more pain than it's worth. So definitely watch these related videos to make sure that you're an Anki master to remember more in less time. Thanks and I'll see you in the next one.